All right, I'm not sure why it took me so long to make this. I've been meaning to make this for a while. I mean, like I've been sick working on my game, trying to get events for beginners going, all that kind of stuff. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a weighted switch. And a weighted switch is a switch that cannot be pressed unless something is pushed on top of it. And then the, the switch will sink to the ground and it will be pressed, essentially. Uh, just a real quick note, though, I probably won't be zipping these game file folders and uploading them anymore uh, i don't know how many people are actually using that but it's just a bunch of extra work and then the file size is bigger than it should be i would have to go through and delete all of the files that are not needed and it, it's just a whole process okay so let's let's go ahead and make our switch here i want one that like this that uh looks like it's on the ground so we'll just do this we'll call this switch okay and then let's grab a movable object so we'll just call this movable object. I think there's a boulder in here. Here we go. Boulder. Okay. So we got our boulder. We got our switch. Now, what we want to happen here is on player touch, uh, we'll set it to below character so that when the player stands on it, it shows text. You are not heavy enough to press the switch. We're going to start a new event page. This is going to be the switch pressed. So let's do it here. Now you can animate it in between if you want to, but for simplicity's sake, we're just going to do this switch. Let's create a new switch and then we'll call this switch pressed. Okay. So this is going to be activated when switch pressed is on. I think that's all we need to do here for now. Now we're going to go to our movable object. This is where uh, a lot of the magic is going to happen. So the first thing we want to do is set the trigger to player touch. And then we are going to have it move away from the player. So move around this event and move away from the player. Okay. I'm going to do a real quick play test to show you how this works. So we're going to walk up to the boulder here. We're going to touch it and it's just going to move away from us. Now, one thing that I forgot to do that we'll have to do is if you see here, it will not go into the switch. So on the switch, we need to make sure that through is on. Play test this again so I can show you how this works now. So if we step on it, you are not heavy enough to press the switch. And when we move the boulder, it'll go right over top of the switch. Perfect. Now, how do we get the boulder to recognize that it's on the switch and the switch to recognize that so that the switch gets pressed? We are going to use region IDs. Okay. Region IDs are incredibly useful. They'll probably have their own video in the events for beginners series because they're so useful for so many things. I actually have a laser puzzle in my slime game that I'm using right now and the region tags dictate which type of surface the laser is hitting and depending on which surface it knows which direction to bounce and so all i have to do is place the region ids and the laser will just bounce wherever i need it to we're just going to use for this example we're going to use region one so we're going to make the switch region one now inside of our boulder event so after it moves away from the player we want to go to page three here and we want to go to get location info and uh, let's create a new variable here we'll call it region id Okay. And what we want to do is change the info type to region ID. What this does is it pulls the region ID of whatever you designate here as a location. So for instance, for this example, designation by character, this event, and what it's going to do is after it moves, it's going to get the region ID of the tile that it is on. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a conditional branch and we're going to say if region ID equals one, we're going to turn switch pressed on. We actually need to make an else branch for this. And if it's not one, it needs to make sure that switch pressed is off. Now, the reason that you need this is because if it only turns on when you hit one, once you roll the boulder on top of it, if you try to roll the boulder off of it, it will still show the switch as pressed. So it needs to make sure that it is on region one. And if it's not on region one, it needs to turn the switch pressed switch off. So our button won't be pressed down without the boulder. All right, let's give this a little play test uh, real quick. Let's have it play a sound effect so that we know for sure. Uh, I think there's a switch sound effect in here somewhere. 
That's a big, uh, big, heavy kind of sound. Yeah, let's do that. I was checking the levels in OBS to make sure it wasn't too loud. Let's uh, check out our boulder here. So it's going to move around. Okay, it's looking good. Let's see what happens when we stand on it. You are not heavy enough to press the switch. All right, let's push the boulder onto it. As you can see, or as you, I guess here, the switch has been pressed. So let's push the boulder off of it. And now the switch is unpressed. And there you go. That's how to make a weighted switch. Region IDs can be like as powerful as switches and variables. And as you can see, there's like so many that you can use. It goes up to 255, but they're very powerful and they deserve their own episode in events for beginners because they're so powerful. You can use them in so many ways. Future content. Um, I'm actively recording events for beginners too. Once we get through a lot of the like explaining event commands and what they do, we can get into more stuff like this. And I'll probably revisit this again and show you the various ways you can do this. This is not the only way to do this. There are several other ways to do this. This is just the fastest for me personally, the one that I like doing the most. Uh, it's very easy to do. But after we get through a lot of the basics and events for beginners, you know, we'll go through treasure chests and how to properly animate sprites and how to make stuff like the laser puzzle and how to, you know, make a good fade out animation. Like there, there's, there's so many things that we can go over. So we just got to get through the nitty gritty of explaining all the commands. Um, and that that's going to take time. When I was new to RPG maker back in 2003, it was pretty overwhelming. The amount of commands in the game. I didn't know what any of it did. So I want to make sure to go through all of that so that anybody new coming in has a base level of knowledge to kind of build off of. But that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for hanging out and uh, I'll see you in the next one.